Okay, in the last tutorial, we calculated the confusion mat matrix and they calculated some accuracy, precision, and a recall, but we were unable to visualize the confusion matrix. So, in this tutorial, we will see how we can display the confusion matrix and it will give us an idea which class has low accuracy and what were false positives and what were the true positives, and we can visualize them. So let's do that. So first let me close these things and I'm going to add a new form. Add and Windows form. We can give it a name like form confusion matrix. Okay. And in this confusion matrix, I'm going to use a data grid view in the data group we can find that there is a data grid view and i don't need to enable editing deleting all these things and uh, let me make it a little bit bigger and set its properties to be okay in all directions it should be we are anchoring it in all directions and also i need maybe a rich text box to display the accuracy and all that information and I'm also setting its anchor just to the left, right, bottom, and remove it from the top. Okay. And let me change the background of this one into a different color. So maybe this one. Fine. And I just want to rename it to Data Grid View Confusion Matrix and this rich text box rich text box summary okay so we will summarize and display the accuracy information and this one will display the confusion matrix so i will write a method that will convert a 2d array into a data table so that we can easily display it in this data grid view so the best thing is to add this method right here in our helper class so we can call we can make it public static data table so we want to return a data table and the name of the method will be array to data table for example and we are expecting an integer type of matrix okay so first let me create a data table object data table dt is equal to new data table since i am also using another library that you can see open xml so it is assuming that this is basically part of the open xml no i want to use the system dot data dot data table so i want to use the object of this data table since I'm using multiple libraries, this might be some problem sometimes. So I just use the fully qualified name to mention that I'm using this data table object from system.data. Okay. And now I can add a column dot add and the first column that I want to name is just classes. I want to show the classes in the top row and the first column and we can add the classes here so integer i matrix dot get length the number of rows i mean the second dimension will give us the number of rows and we want to add the values into this data data columns dot add we can say class followed by the index i since i starts from zero and i just want to show class one class two or maybe class zero class one class two so we want to show class one cl class zero class one class two in the first column and again for integer i and uh, for all the rows in my table or in my matrix dot rows get length the first dimension that is the number of rows we can create a new row data row row is equal to new we can create data table dot new row so we want a new row 
and we can fix it by using system.data okay and uh, rows first value always will be the class so rows first value zero every rows first value will consist of the class name so class plus i that's it and now the next columns will consist of the actual information so we need to create integer j and j is less than matrix dot get length the second dimension so the number of columns that we have i can easily do something like this j plus one is equal to matrix i comma j okay or maybe I don't need to do this J plus one maybe we can start from one because the, at the first location we have already set this value and for the next locations we just want to set the numbers I will show you actually what this one is doing and once we read all the data we can uh, add this row into the data table so rows dot add our row is ready to be added and then we can return this dt okay we also need to fully qualify this here to make sure that it is the system that data dot data table so we will pass in the uh, matrix and it will return us a data table which we will use as a data source for this data grid view so let's go to this confusion matrix let's go to the code okay we'll code and we don't need this uh, confusion matrix default constructor i will change it into a parameter constructor where we will pass the confusion matrix and as well as the text that we want to display and then i will be using this uh, rich text box summary dot text is equal to txt to display the textual information and then data grid view confusion matrix dot data source is equal to helper function helper class dot array to data table because we are receiving this array and it will convert into a data table and then we will be able to see it in this data grid view we can call instead of displaying it here i just prepared the text and we can send it to the recently created this form form confusion matrix let's say form is equal to new method and this is expecting the confusion matrix and the text that we have just prepared here so we passed both the cm and the text and then we can show it dot show dialog so let us run this and see what we can get it so the first thing that we need to do is to load the data and once we load the data it will give us this information we did the test train split one thing i feel is when we do the test train split we use 2 point or i mean 20 percent it is it has been fixed maybe you can do something or maybe create a user interface to change that also as well so let's train the model and these are the values uh, that we use as default from the uh, configuration and i forgot to implement the save method which i will also implement so once we change them and when we save them it should be saved into our what is this configuration file as well so we should store them the, right now it is loading these default values into our form so i need to implement this save i will show you how to do that all in a moment and uh, now let's apply with these default values so it is trying to train the model so the model is trained and then we can test the model and this is what it is showing right now and for class zero it shows it the accuracy and all those things are okay but i think i made a mistake somewhere 
and it should be not from one it should be let's do with the zero okay the, this one i think plus one should have been plus one okay let me try load the data and then we do test train split and then train the model and apply this model the model is trained and then we can test it right so you can see that for the class 0 112 have been successfully classified but for class 1 nothing has been classified so this is not a good learning so if we change train this model with something let's say instead of back prop i'm going to use this R prop and apply it the model is trained and now if I do the testing so the result seems to be much better than the back prop it doesn't look like working in this situation so 82 for class 0 are correctly classified 33 for class 1 are correctly classified 8 have been misclassified into class 1 while 24 have been misclassified into class 0. This one will give us an idea that what is the where the things are going wrong. And uh, the other thing that is really important uh, to look for is these parameters that we need to optimize. And also, if the parameters are not producing the results, for example, as I see 79% here accuracy then we may need to look at the features or the data what is the problem so there are some uh, features that i think here for example the age and other things uh, which may not be very useful for example so we may need to do a feature selection approach and then apply the uh, ann to improve the accuracy so the basic objective of these uh, these series of tutorials was to give you an idea how can we implement artificial neural network using emg ucb and how we can get the results and i hope these videos will help you to better understand both computer vision artificial intelligence and how can we implement them in emg ucb